Um, the average racing career of a racehorse is less than three years. By five years of age, most of them are spent and uh, are retired and often sent to slaughter. When the horse is born, when the foal is born, uh, then the stud often will sell the horse to an individual or to a syndicate. A syndicate is made up of uh, possibly anywhere between 10 and 100 shareholders. The purpose of, of the syndicate is to turn a profit. In October 2019, the film The Final Race was screened on Australian TV. It reported on the destruction of uncompetitive racehorses at the EU-approved abattoir Merrimist. We visit the site in February-March 2020 to see what has happened since the film was broadcast. Elio Celotto has much to tell us. We meet him at the Merrimist abattoir. Near Merrimist is the assembly centre of Brian Monroe, one of the major kill buyers. That's what slaughter horse traders are called in Australia. There, we witness how two horses, a Pinto and a Palomino, are given neck collars with numbered slaughter tags just before loading. However, they should have been tagged when bought by Monroe. We follow the horses being transported to the slaughterhouse. The unloading is unprofessional. Horses that are already weakened are stressed further. Monroe makes three deliveries today. The last load arrives at Merrimist in the baking midday heat. The horses are soaked with sweat as they leave the transporter. More stressed horses are unloaded from trucks at the Merrimist abattoir. One group on this transporter is tagged for slaughter. A second group is not tagged. Only wild horses must not wear neck collars. The brand on the shoulder reveals that these are not wild horses. One horse looks severely injured. It's lame. Stressful transport, rough unloading, searing heat. No food or adequate protection from the elements. The horses will be slaughtered the next day. Animal welfare has no place here. In the pens, many horses are emaciated and exhausted. One horse falls and injures itself. Its posture clearly shows that this horse is in pain. No care is provided. The worker ignores the emergency situation. The wound is left untreated. We recognize the Pinto and its friend, the Palomino, wearing their new Monroe slaughter tags. Another major supplier of horses to the Merrimist abattoir is killed by a Les Evans. His assembly center is well hidden in the rolling landscape. The property is vast, plenty of space for many horses. The only food some roughage. Feeding stations are few and far between, too few for all the horses here. They search amongst the dried excrement for food remains. Horses here are most likely to die without any medical attention. Barbed wire surrounds the area. It's an injury risk. Banned in Switzerland and several EU countries. The wounds we see are left untreated. Veterinary care costs money. No money is invested in horses that are discarded like waste in the slaughterhouse. The brands on the shoulders or neck show that these are racehorses, gallopers and trotters. Foals, 
deemed not good enough to race by their breeders. These two end up with the kill buyer. They are already emaciated. Back at Merrimist. There's a high demand for horse meat from the EU and Switzerland. Kill buyer Evans delivers horses. His transporter is full. And includes horses unfit for transport. The third well-known kill buyer is Peter Loffel. He has been supplying Merrimist for many years. Loffel now runs two assembly centers in Marupna, 1500 kilometers away. One is directly next to his home. Here too, the land is spacious, but there's little in the way of pastures. The ground is hard and dusty. Food is provided sporadically. We only see straw with little nutritional value. The trees offer the horses no shade. The temperature this morning is already 32 degrees Celsius. Three days later, the horses are desperately trying to find shade and food. At Kilbyer Loffel's farm, we also see an injured horse. We meet up with Kim. She wants to remain anonymous. Her name has been changed. Kim has been investigating for a long time the fate of horses retired from the racing industry. She shows us Kilbyer Loffel's second hidden assembly center in Marupna. We gain an overview. It looks like all the other assembly centers we have seen so far. Barren, dusty land where no grass grows. Signs born of prying eyes. We find a group of horses in light shade. It's hot, almost 40 degrees Celsius. The horses search for food remains in the dust. Some are extremely emaciated. Kim says some are new arrivals. They look better. The horses wear blue neck collars with slaughter tags. Many of them are ex-race horses, according to the brands on the shoulders or neck. Out of sheer hunger, this horse chews on a net. It can be deadly. Racehorses are comfortable around people. They were cared for once before being sent to an assembly center for slaughter, when they were still an investment. Here they are wasted. The care is terminated. We discover a horse tagged with the number L4026 registered to Luffel. It carries a striking shoulder brand. A thoroughbred racehorse. Kim finds the horse online. Okay. This, horse was this horse was identified by its brands in the Australian stud book. His name is King's Voyage. He was foaled on 4th October 2010. He had six starts. It only shows his last three runs. His total prize money was 2,105 Australian dollars. In the same group, we find the trotting broodmare, yes, I'm a party girl. We ask Kim what she found out about this mare. She tells us, yes, I'm a party girl was bred in New Zealand. She was retired from racing at the age of five and was then used as a broodmare until 2019. After losing four foals, she was sold for slaughter. She is no longer profitable. Noble thoroughbreds and trotters, reduced to investment products, alive for cash return. Kill by a Luffel's transporter is huge. It's 1500 kilometers from Marupna to the Merrimist Abattoir. 30 hours of heat, wind, hunger and thirst. In the EU, horses must be watered every 8 hours and fed after 24 hours. Transport vehicles must be roofed and horses must be transported in individual stalls. None of that is provided here. Death travels on the transporters.
And uh, if that horse turns out to not be profitable, this horse is likely to be discarded and uh, sent to slaughter and another one will replace it. The racing industry's wastage is staggering. The abattoir worker swears and shouts at the horses. The brand on one of these racehorses reveals his identity, War Ends, served by a famous stallion, sold as a yearling for 400,000 Australian dollars, 71 starts, 10 wins and $388,000 in prize money. War Ends, the gelding here in the stunning box, was still listed as active on Racing Australia's database 18 months after he had been slaughtered for human consumption. As a goodbye, he is kicked in the head. And this is why we see so many horses that perhaps may have even raced a week or two before they are being killed. Um, and, and almost certainly, as is the case with most race horses, that uh, they use drugs on them and, uh, and the, horse is, uh, the horse meat is in fact tainted and shouldn't be uh, eligible for human consumption. The thoroughbred mare receptionist was slaughtered just 14 days after her last race, at four years old. Well, at the moment here in Australia, the horse meat that is exported for human consumption has to be drug free for six months. However, the vendor declaration form that has to be filled out, we know has been falsified in, in many cases. We agree to meet up again with our informant Kim for a closer and look. What do you think about that system? The current system is that... The, the current owner has to fill out a horse vendor declaration. It asks different things about the horse, including if the horse has been treated with any drugs, if it has been sick in the last 21 days. And for domestic horses, it asks about certain drugs, if the horse has been treated with any drugs, if it's been sick in the last 21 days. On the tub, it says... On the tub, it says, meat withholding period, not to be used in horses intended for human consumption. I would take that to mean... I would take that to mean that horses should never be slaughtered for human consumption if they have been given this drug, commonly known as bute. And most domestic horses at some stage in their life would have been given bute. Would have been given bute. Uh, it, it's a dewormer, isn't it? It is... All Does that also apply to this warming paste? All horses should be dewormed regularly. And this product also says not to be used for horses intended for human consumption. The fact that some carcasses are found positive for the presence of medicinal products at the slaughterhouse and that this does not correspond with the declarations about the absence of medical treatments of the horses reported in the horse vendor declarations implies that these declarations are not always reliable. We follow a transporter taking horses to the auction in Ichuka. The horses appear emaciated. Ichuka is where kill buyers like Peter Loffel buy the horses. Three of us go to the auction with some hidden cameras. The auctioneer moves from pen to pen above the horses' heads. A racehorse, whose last start was on the 18th of January 2020, just six weeks before this auction, the horse is still registered as active. Innuendo, a seven-year-old gelding, nine starts up to 2018. 11,000 Australian dollars in prize money, disposed of at the auction in Ichuka. We recognize an emaciated mare from the transporter heading to the auction. She is weak and hungry. Crowds of people gather around her pen, partly because the RSPCA, who are responsible for animal welfare at the auction, intervene and stop the sale. An RSPCA inspector shouts, She could be going to Queensland, he means the Merrimist Abattoir. We later find out that the mare was sold under the counter. 
Over 50% of horses slaughtered for export to Switzerland and the EU are racehorses. They are born into a life of selection, training, racing and premature death. Many end up at auctions like these, while others are sold directly to kill buyers by breeders and trainers. The faces and bodies betray the suffering in their short lives. After the auction, the kill buyers forcibly load the horses onto trucks. They are beaten about the heads. Electric prods and plastic pipes are used. So yearling speech Catherine tells us some of the other methods kill buyers use to get hold of horses. She too wishes to remain anonymous. She tells us the story of how a woman acted as a front to obtain her two yearlings, Peach and Archie, for a kill buyer by deception. She had promised to look after them, but if she ever couldn't keep them, they would be sent back to me. The reality was, within four days she got a kill buyer to collect Peach and Archie and gave him clear instructions to have the yearlings slaughtered. to collect my two yearlings by put them on his Five days later, both horses were killed at the Merrimist abattoir. Merrimist, and they were slaughtered in Merrimist. Um, and people have the strange idea that only unwanted and old horses go to Merrimist for slaughter. It's not the case. The unwanted and the old. It's big business. Do you have, Do you have evidence of the horse vendor declarations being falsified in your case? Yes. Yes, the police in Queensland access both Peach and Archie's vendor declarations from Merrimist. Both documents were signed by the woman who bought them from me. Both stated that she had bred the two yearlings and that neither of them had any drugs in their system. Catherine says that Peach was given butte for eight weeks to treat a leg injury. That ended four weeks before their slaughter. The buyer knew about the treatment. We want to see the workings of horse racing and travel to the trotting track at Shepparton. There are hardly any spectators. Harness races are mostly watched on TV at home or at the bookmakers. Flat and jumps races are far bigger events and attract larger crowds. The races are shown on huge screens. Money is at stake, a lot of money. The thoroughbred racing industry alone has a turnover of $9 billion per year. Behind every dollar is a living creature, reduced to nothing but a bat. It's a callous business. Some own shares in the horse. Others hope to see their number come over the line first. Both are driven by money and gambling, not the life of the horse. If a horse can no longer turn a profit, it becomes wastage. Wastage is the term that they use for horses that leave the industry prematurely and unfortunately that's pretty much every single horse that is bred for racing. It's a wretched end. They arrive as wrecks at the slaughterhouse after enduring torturously long transports. They are shown no compassion. No money is spent on their care. Uh, many of these horses have sustained injuries. They have psychological uh, injuries as well. Um, and it's simply more expedient uh, to get rid of these horses and, and purchase another one that hopefully might make you some money. A look inside the pens at Merrimist Abattoir reveals the extent of their misery. These are horses slaughtered for dinner tables in Switzerland and the EU. Part of the problem is the huge demand for cheap horse meat coming from Belgian importer Multimeat and the members of the Swiss Association of Horse Meat Importers, VPI. Kill buyer Monroe pays 70 Australian cents per kilogram of horse, around 40 euro cents. The shoulder brands identify these horses as thoroughbred racers. Many are barely older than foals. No bets are placed on these young horses. Here and there, there are pens with wild horses known as brumbies.
These are discarded broodmares, recognizable by the chains with name tags around their necks. Weather protection, inadequate. Food, bedding, nowhere in sight. Wound care, pain relief, not provided. Merrimus slaughters up to 230 horses on one day each week, around 10,000 per year. Highly unprofessional and aggressive treatment awaits the horses here. The horses begin to panic. The floor is slippery. Some fall to the ground. The workers beat and shout. One horse is forced backwards into the raceway. A group of wild horses, Brumbies, recognizable by their lack of slaughter tags. They are covered in wounds, likely from being transported. Brumbies are not used to human contact. They too are beaten and shouted at. A plastic pipe appears from the top right. It contains a power cable with bare wires at the end. Every electric shock violently startles the distraught horse. The cruelty continues in the raceway with more electric shocks. Shocks to the anus are routine. One horse drops to the floor. A worker tries to force the horse to stand up by repeatedly shocking its head and body. Another horse is dragged into the stunning box using a cable winch. It was stunned in the raceway using a captive bolt pistol. It needs to be bled without delay, but minutes pass by. Yet another horse is winched into the stunning box. EU regulations forbid animals which are unable to walk from being dragged to the place of slaughter. They must be killed where they lie. We ask German official veterinarian Claudia Eckert to assess some of the slaughter scenes. The horse being driven into the stunning box can see over the wall of the box into the slaughter room. It is essential that this is prevented since the view of the slaughter room frightens the horse further and it tries to escape from the danger. Two shots are administered using a captive bolt pistol. At the first shot, the horse makes strong defensive movements, pedals with its hind limbs and falls backwards onto its back. It continues to struggle with its legs and can be seen to take about six breaths, which are visible from the rise and fall of its abdominal wall. The horse has not been stunned correctly. This Brumby panics, sees the slaughter room, smells the blood and knows what's about to happen. Another horse is incorrectly stunned. Its head hangs over the side of the stunning box. A worker presses down on its nostrils. It is bolted a second time. The horse lies on the ground, breathing heavily. It is then suspended for bleeding despite still not being correctly stunned.
The brands of respectable studs are also seen at Merrimist Abattoir. We decide to visit one of the well-known studs. We want to ask the management of Aerofield Stud to give us their views on the situation. Not today, we're told. We are asked to send an email and given advertising you know, brochures. Like university open days or whatever, just to recruit staff. We press further. Okay. The slaughter scenes were broadcast by ABC in Australia in October 2019. What we're doing here is okay. Let people talk. It's all very far-fetched. We ask them again if they have seen the TV report. Yes, terrible. it was terrible. Yeah, yeah. It's very bad. What do we think? Who is responsible? We ask who is responsible, but are given no answer. We ask Elio Cilotto. They breed from them, they profit from them, and they should be responsible from them. The brochures from Aerofield give an insight into how much money is at stake. Stallion, the autumn sun, had nine starts. He earned his owners almost 3.5 million Australian dollars in prize money. Then he was used as breeding stallion. In 2019, his stud fee was $77,000 per service. Further figures in a second brochure reveal the magnitude of the racing industry. Over 19,000 flat races, not including harness races. Over 6,000 foals, most of which will never make a racing career. Over $400 million from yearling sales. Close by is another premium stud, Emirates Park. This dying horse is one of theirs. It is only very young. This gelding is bolted five times, kicked about the face and head. He endures the worst tortures lasting several minutes until he is finally dead. We also showed these scenes to official veterinarian Claudia Eckert. It is clear that there is only one captive bolt pistol in use. Each time a shot fails to stun the animal adequately, the operator must first reload the captive bolt pistol. The EU regulation requires a loaded backup device to be on hand, which is missing and valuable time is wasted each time the pistol is reloaded. Brumbies are herd animals. They panic when separated for slaughter. This fear becomes unbearable when their head is restrained for bolting. After being bolted in the head, the horse kicks and jerks frantically in agonizing pain. This horse is not fully in the stunning box before being bolted. Its hind leg gets caught in the raceway. Workers break its leg to move the horse into the bleeding area. Flared nostrils clearly show that the horse is not correctly stunned. A worker cuts off the nostrils immediately after incising the blood vessels. We ask official veterinarian Claudia Eckert. This is prohibited. The animal is not yet dead. It must first lose sufficient blood to trigger cardiovascular failure. The captive bolt pistol is merely a stunning device. A horse suspended in the bleeding area can be seen making regular pumping movements with its abdominal wall. It is likely that the animal has not been stunned correctly and is breathing rapidly. The Belgian company Multimeat is involved in the Merrimist Abattoir. Multimeat and members of the Swiss Association of Horsemeat Importers VPI are participants of an online marketing platform for imported horsemeat called Respect for Life. The European importers have long claimed to have animal welfare issues under control in overseas slaughterhouses with manuals and audits. Merrimist was inspected by the auditing firm SGS in September 2018. That same month, hidden cameras documented flagrant violations of animal welfare standards. The investigations in Australia have been ongoing for more than two years. We received the slaughter scenes from a confidential source. They were filmed on 22 randomly selected slaughter days by up to eight cameras hidden in the abattoir. These are not individual cases. This is systematic torture. How much more evidence do Multimeat and VPI need? 
After the Animal Welfare Foundation and Tierschutzbund Zürich have spent years documenting animal cruelty in their overseas partners' abattoirs, surely they must realize their attempts to enforce animal welfare standards have failed.